Hi, in today's short training, it's three ways to do intermittent fasting, an easy way, a medium way, and an extreme way. Before I get started, worth saying, if you are contemplating intermittent fasting, and you've never done this sort of thing before, then please do check with your medical advisor, be that a doctor, physician, or anyone that's in charge of your health uh, care. You need to be double checking before you make any sort of changes whatsoever. Now, intermittent fasting may be something you're familiar with. It has been popularized over the last few years. Uh, one of the big reasons for people looking at intermittent fasting is for weight loss. Well, I'm gonna be sharing with you uh, from going starting off with extreme to medium to easy to give you some sort of ideas. I'm also gonna be sharing at the end the sort of food sources that you should be looking to consume so that when you are in that fasting stage, that non-eating phase, you can feel as satiated as possible because one of the problems that people have with intermittent fasting is feeling hungry in that period of time where they're fasting. And if you're feeling hungry during that uh, fasting period, it probably isn't gonna work for you as a long-term strategy. So I'll be sharing with you at the end uh, the types of foods that you should be looking to consume during your eating window. So before we get started, let me just talk a little bit about what intermittent fasting actually is. So what is intermittent fasting? Well, first of all, what it isn't, it isn't starvation. Uh, it's the voluntary abstinence from food. And people do it for lots of different reasons. Uh, they do it for health reasons, spiritual reasons. It's even being used for protests as well. Now, just think about this for a second. Think about the last time you felt a bit under the weather with a cold or something of that nature. Probably one of the last things you thought about doing was actually having a good, big uh, meal put in front of you because you just don't feel like it. So our bodies are actually designed to actually go into fasting mode when we actually need to do it. So we do it instinctively to actually help uh, repair our bodies. And there's a famous philosopher that goes back many, many, many years. His name was Hippocrates, I'm sure you've heard of him. And one of his famous quotes was, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. So instinctively, when we're feeling under the weather, the last thing we're gonna do is eat a big meal. So intermittent fasting essentially is the voluntary abstinence from food for a specific period of time. And again, if you go back over some of the religious cultures, even now, today, uh, people do it for different periods of time. So it's nothing new, it's just being popularized by, I say, I think the weight loss industry that almost hijacked it and given us this, I would say, a warped version of what intermittent fasting is and actually taken away some of the many benefits over and above just weight loss. So that's just my very quick overview of what intermittent fasting is. If you want more in-depth information on this, I'd recommend you uh, Google or YouTube a chap called Dr. Jason Fung, who has written a book on this and done a lot of research on it. Uh, and also Dr. Eric Berg, another uh, person who's done a lot of research into intermittent fasting. So that's just my quick overview of what intermittent fasting is. We're now gonna get into those three ways of doing it, the easy, the medium, and the extreme. Okay, so the first of our three ways of doing intermittent fasting is the extreme. And this one is, I would say, very extreme for probably 90 odd percent of the population. And it's called OMAD, which stands for one meal a day. So if you ate at 12 noon today, uh, you wouldn't eat again until 12 noon the next day, essentially. So you give yourself effectively 23, 24 hours of not eating anything. Now, it is extreme. There have been a lot of uh, research done into this method of eating, and there's been a lot of health benefits attached to it. But again, I wouldn't be recommending this to my clients. I don't think it's a, a sensible way to approach um, improving your health or losing weight. I think it is a bit extreme for people to get involved in. Having said that, I'm not saying that you wouldn't entertain it at some point in your life, but I think you need to be fully versed on exactly what you're doing, why you're doing it, and making sure that all of your health markers are appropriate for you to be able to engage in this type of uh, fasting method. So this is the first one, and I call it the extreme one, the OMAD, one meal a day. Let's move on to number two. So number two, medium intermittent fasting, the 16-8. This is probably the most widely used intermittent fasting uh, protocol. And one of the reasons I think it is so widely used is because, let's just think about it for a second, if you stop eating at 6 p.m. in the evening, it would mean you're not eating again until 10 a.m. the next day. So essentially what people are doing is skipping their break the fast, and not breakfast as in Mr. Kellogg's breakfast, but basically when they decide they're gonna have their first meal of the day. So that's the 16-8. Again, a lot of benefits attached to this one. Uh, one of the reasons I think it's more 
uh, medium as opposed to the extreme is because for a large part of it, you could actually be in bed just sleeping. So up to eight hours potentially, you could be sleeping whilst you're fasting. So you're not sort of up for 16 hours not eating. Some of that time is spent actually sleeping. So that's the 16-8, the medium intermittent fasting. And finally, number three, the easy intermittent fasting, uh, the 12-12. Now I say it's easy, that all depends upon where you are mentally at any given point in time when it comes to uh, you know, making changes to your eating regime. But what I like about this one is it's probably got the most flexibility in terms of moving your eating window. So let's just say you stop eating at 7 p.m. at night. It basically means you don't eat again until 7 a.m. the following morning. So from 7 p.m. through till 10, three hours, you know, you go to bed at 10 p.m., you know, you're in bed from 10, hopefully through until seven. You know, there's your 12 hours made up quite easily. So again, you're not sat up, not eating for 12 hours. You're spending the bulk of that time actually sleeping. So I think it offers the most flexibility and it's probably the easiest intermittent fasting to get into, in my opinion. And once you've gone down the 12-12 route, there may be times during the course of the week or for special occasions coming up, you may decide to extend that window by four hours to give yourself that additional four hours uh, benefiting from reducing food intake and just shifting a couple of pounds if that's what you're doing it for. But you're doing it from a 12-12 platform as opposed to going from what you're doing possibly now, which is maybe eating for, you know, grazing throughout the course of the day and suddenly saying, right, that's it, I'm going 16-8. That can feel a little bit extreme in itself, although I've called it medium. That can seem like a big extreme thing to do. Versus going from what you're doing now, I think to a 12-12 is infinitely more doable. So those are the three different ways that you can do intermittent fasting. The extreme, which is the OMAD, one meal a day. Uh, the 16-8, probably the most popular one out there. And the 12-12, which I think is the one that you could probably introduce without too much difficulty. But again, Double check with your medical advisor, your doctor, your physician, your healthcare advisor before making any sort of dietary changes. Now let's talk about some of the foods that you should be looking to eat to make sure that you feel sufficiently satiated when you are doing the fasting element of intermittent fasting. Okay, so let's talk about the different food sources that you wanna be consuming when you are an intermittent fasting regime or just generally healthy eating. One of the challenges that people have with intermittent fasting is they don't feel satiated when they're not eating. And one of the mistakes a lot of people make when they're doing intermittent fasting, in my opinion, is they simply uh, stop eating at a set period of time. Uh, they feel like they're absolutely ravenous, starving, they need to eat food. And part of the reason for that is it's because of the food they are currently consuming. You know, if it's very high in, you know, simple carbohydrates, you know, very sugary, high sugar content, that's going to spike your blood sugar levels, which will spike your insulin levels. And when you get those spikes happening, not only do you want to eat more carbohydrates, but you also get a significant dip as well. So when you're in that dip phase, that's when you're craving more carbohydrates. And if you're trying to do some sort of intermittent fasting, even the 12-12, which I mentioned, that can become very difficult because during that non-eating phase, because you've eaten lots of sugary type carbohydrates, you just feel ravenous. So a great way to stabilize your blood sugar levels, thereby keeping your insulin levels nice and even, and so you feel satiated, is to eat a combination of the three key macronutrients. I'm not gonna go into the specifics of which type of protein and carbohydrate and fat, but I'll do that in a different video. But if you can work with this simple kind of uh, rule of thumb, Whenever you sit down to a meal, be that breakfast, and again, breakfast is when you break the fast, not necessarily at seven in the morning, but if you can have your first meal of the day, your second meal, your third meal, however many meals you have, if you can look at the plate and see uh, a protein source, that can be meat, it can be vegetarian, um, a complex carbohydrate source, and a good fat source, then that's gonna give you the best balance in terms of a complete meal, keeping your blood sugar levels down, keeping your insulin levels down, keeping you feeling satiated so that you can quite comfortably go through those phases of fasting. If you don't address your eating in combination with fasting, that's where you're gonna come unstuck. And that's where a lot of people do come unstuck. They don't address what they're consuming. So 
three food groups that you should definitely be having on your plate at all times, I would suggest is protein, healthy fats and carbohydrates. Even if you're not doing a fasting regime, these are the three food sources you should be aiming to have on your plate at any given time. So there you have it, three ways to do intermittent fasting, easy, medium and extreme. I would suggest that before you entertain any of these methods, you double check with your doctor, medical advisor, physician, whoever's looking after your health before making any dietary changes. If you found this of use and you've liked what you've heard, then do go ahead and hit the like button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well if you'd like to uh, be notified as to when I release more videos like this. And if you have any sort of questions at all or you'd like me to do a particular video on a topic that you'd like me to speak on, then again, reach out to me, let me know. I'll be happy to put that video together for you. Until then, take very good care and bye for now.